A picture of you in a really small uh, Green Bay Packers jersey. Uh, yeah. And you know, I saw that, and you know what immediately came to mind? What? Season two of Love on the Spectrum is back. Like as soon <laughs> as I saw it, <laughs> I was like, I gotta watch that show again. Hundred <laughs> percent. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by Liquid IV. Cooler weather makes it easier to miss signs of dehydration like overheating or perspiration, which means it's even more important to keep your body properly hydrated. I'm telling you, I what I do in the morning, I tear one open. It makes, first of all, it makes water taste better, taste yeah. like something. In our water challenge, John yeah. Manns is just drinking Liquid IV. Oh, he's, he's hydrating better than yeah. anybody. Uh, good flavors like watermelon, strawberry, lemon, lime, especially if you're gonna like work out too, like getting the extra hydration in your system. If you're hungover, one liquid IV will right your boat immediately. It's great to have at breakfast. Super good to start your day that way. Like I said before, a workout or if you're hungover, um, li liquid IV hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code BEARS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code BEARS at liquidiv.com. Holy shit, it's almost the holidays and movement. The original watch brand to break all the rules started by two college dropouts who didn't want to overpay for nice watches has you covered. They are bringing the most sleekest, most quality gifts of the season with hundreds of watches, blue light glasses, sunnies, and fine jewelry styles for you to choose from. Stuff your stockings, impress your family, and wow your partner to treat treats or just treat yourself because you're dressing up. It's the perfect gift for movement. Listen, here's the deal. It's a Hollywood, se Hollywood holiday season. I can't even talk. It's the holiday season, and you'll be going to a lot of parties, and it's nice to change up watches. And the deal with movement is you can get a bunch of different nice watches, and you aren't going to break the bank. Their watches literally start as low as $99, I think. $95. Starting, yeah, since they start at $95. Clean, minimal designs, quality product, and they have almost 2 million watches in over 160 countries. Be the big winner this holiday season with a gift from movement. Go to mvmt.com slash cave. That's mvmt.com slash cave. Join the movement. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by Sattva. I'm a huge fan. We've been huge, huge fans of Sattva for almost a decade now. I'm getting all kinds of friends, family, people tag me in it, and they go, I got the Sattva. You told me, and you were right. Why? You deserve to sleep comfortably. You deserve to sleep on a high-quality premium mattress without paying an extraordinary price, and Sattva is that company, S A A. TVA.com slash the shit and you get $200 off any mattress of your choice. It doesn't matter which kind you're a fan of. They have different firmness levels in their luxury firm brand. They have a, a, a memory foam mattress called Loom and Leaf in there. If you like memory foam, if you want a mattress that moves up and down and vibrates, they have one called Solaire. They cover the full spectrum of mattresses. <coughs> you deserve to get a great mattress that doesn't cost a fortune. So go now. Sattva, S A A T V A dot com slash the shit and get $200 off any mattress of your choice. Come sounds so weird to talk. Like when you say, oh, I came all, like, yeah. like you, there's only a couple people you can say come to. You yeah. can say come to your dad. Like that, you'd be like, Argh. oh, yeah, no. Yeah, or your mom. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I even see weird, I even feel weird about, um, like, when you, like, if you, when you, have you, ever, you've, have, you fuck strangers, right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. When do you ever say like, "Can I come inside you to a stranger?" <laughs> <laughs> you just give it to him. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. No, you know, I think I said I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking. I'm telling. Oh, that's my favorite thing I did yeah. during the movie. Yeah. I learned very quickly when you deal with socialist people, you don't ask, you tell. Yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Wait, oh. you came with someone during the movie? No, 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 oh. no. No, I, I would. Uh, it would be weird to come in someone new. Think so? Yeah. yeah. It would be weird to come in someone new. Like to come in. I'd have to pull out. I'd have to pull out. How come? I don't know. I feel weird about like, even when I come in Leanne, I go like, I, 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 I this is going to sound very creepy and okay. I am drunk. Okay. But um, I feel safe. It sounds so silly. I feel safe. 
Like her yeah. flaws make me feel even more safe too. Like her physical flaws. Physical flaws. Yeah, physical flaws. Yeah, physical flaws. It makes me feel safe when I come inside. <laughs> It makes me feel safe when I come inside my wife. <laughs> and if you if, wait, if, if it was somebody new, you'd be like, I'm coming on you. No, the second I came inside them, I'd be like, this was a bad thing. How like, come? Because because I'd be like, because I if I pulled out, I'd be like, okay, well, that happened. Yeah. But if I came inside them, I'm like, I, no, I don't feel so safe with this person. And I just blew a fucking load inside them. Yeah. I. It's so funny. I... I I was thinking, I think I'm having fucking, I think I need to go to a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking anymore. <laughs> Cheers, try a dirty girl. Okay. Wait, what is this? So this is, so the guys at Rec Tech always hook us up with grills for my tour. Yeah. And they have this drink, it's called a transfusion. It's a dirty girl. And they're like, have one. Any, are you trying one? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm and, trying and one too. And they gave it to us and it doesn't feel like alcohol and it just, it tastes like Kool-Aid. And, it, and it's so fucking good. It is alcohol. It, it is alcohol, but you can drink a hundred of them and not feel like buzzed. Like they're not. It's not a lot of alcohol. I don't think. Just try it. Okay. Tastes great, right? I don't think you can get them everywhere. That is. That's pretty good. I'm not even certain you can get them outside of Augusta, Georgia. But uh, but that they, is damn good. Wait, hold on, man. Yeah, right. How much alcohol is in that? I need my glasses. Holy shit. What is in this? Can I tell you, I used to like the orgasm pulling out was almost, is almost better than coming inside someone. You think so? I actually think so. Not the first time. Not the first time. The first time you come inside someone, it is a pretty great orgasm. You're like, no, yeah. oh, thank you for letting me do that. Yeah. But the, but I, I almost missed the like, oh God, it started. In the yeah. Day, you know? Yeah. And that, and that kind of reckless, <laughs> like, it's just going to go everywhere. Feeling is fun, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, this was just got in, on your stomach, and you're like, oh, it's on your forehead. That's oh, wow. crazy. Oh, that's yeah. right. You got range. Yeah, yeah. I'm just basically pubes. <laughs> I was like, sorry, I know that's gonna be a rough cleanup. You're gonna have to often <laughs> the shower for that. It's like getting in a bath. How much alcohol's in there? I can't tell. I don't see. It, it says seven uh, percent. Seven percent is that that's, a lot? Yes. Yes. It Jesus. tastes good though, right, Annie? <laughs> it. I mean, it. It tastes like there's no alcohol. In yeah, this. you said you could drink a hundred of these and not get drunk. We went which to Rec Tech the day before the lie. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> we went to Rec Tech before the. Um, I feel like this tracksuit's not flattering. We went to Rec Tech. <laughs> we went to Rec Tech before. Um, before the show in Augusta, and you know, picked up a couple smokers. Yeah. And they gave us these dirty girls, and we drank a ton and had a blast, and then went back. Took a nap, woke up, didn't even feel like I had a buzz. Didn't even, didn't even feel like I had a buzz. I got to tell you something. I think you do that a lot. What? Drink, take a nap, and you're like, everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. Work out, put some work in, yeah. feel good about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think if you work out, it just, it clears it all up. I started lifting weights again. Good for you. Yeah, I started lifting weights uh, yesterday. And? Then my first, it was awesome. I'll tell you my workout. Okay. I ran the stairs and then ran the top of the parking garage. I did probably 20 minutes of running. Because I was lifting weights, so it was like a twenty minute run. Then I went down. I did front row raises, mm -hmm. side row raises, and then like these things mm -hmm. where like this. Then I did twenty lunges, twenty squats, and twenty step oh, twelve lunges, twelve squats, ten twenty step ups onto the bus step. I went okay. up and down. And then I did a uh, hundred curls, but with three pounds. Okay. Because yeah, because we're just trying. And by the way, my arm actually hurt today. Well, hundred, hundred reps. I mean, isn't that crazy? Did you do multiple sets of that? I did. Yeah, I did uh, four, 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 and four. Look, man, that's and, great, man. And so, and I, but it was. I got to be honest with you. I felt, I felt like a million bucks when I got done. And then even this morning to feel my arm be sore. The soreness feels good. Ah, oh, it feels yeah. so good. Then I wondered how many times that I lifted weights and actually hurt myself. Like just like remember when you were in like high school and they were like, all right. Welcome to football. Yeah. We're doing 100 push-ups today. And then you do them the next day. Your tits are on fire. And you're yeah. like, I think I pulled all my ligaments. Yeah. <laughs> that happened to me a lot. Yeah. So do you think, here's what I want to know. Do you think you will lift weights again? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Wait, I'm so, do you think it'll be like six months from now? No, it'll be, you know what I'm doing today. What? You ready for this? Yeah. And I have been drinking all day already. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we clue everyone to what time it is, where we're at, and where I've been? It's, um, what time is it? 
It's 1.30. 1.30. You called me last night. You're like, I'm getting you a private jet. I don't care about money. You're like, I'm getting you a private jet. <laughs> You're like, let me let me throw my Rolexes into the closet. Uh-huh. No. So I got flew in today. I drank on the plane. Yeah. I got in today. Uh, we, st- we, got, we went to bed at 3. I woke up at 6. Panic attacks. Yeah, dude, they're back, and so I, but, that's maybe from the drinking, though. No, 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 no. It's it's <laughs> it's uh, it's because I've been gone for so long, and so I'm like a little like rudderless. Okay. So I got in the shower, and then I got out, and then I I got in the shower. Hey, accountability, buddy. Guess what? I, I went to wipe my ass, and I reached <laughs> it super easy, and I went, oh, I'm losing weight. That's I good, Bert. Good. I feel good. And I got out. I started like stretching. I did like a whole thing of stretches, and I was like. Okay, I'm feeling good. And panic attacks went away. Took a shower, started drinking, flew here. My workout today, you ready for it? We're doing yeah. this in the in the in the hotel room. Okay. Unless you want to party tonight. No, no. Do you want to go get cigars at the scar bar? No. What are you doing tonight? Uh, resting. You just got home. Yeah, I'm exhausted. You look it. Thank you. That's, why do you look exhausted and you don't do anything? What do you mean? Like you what are you exhausted from? I just did. I did seven uh, shows. Uh, okay, okay, I worked okay, out okay, every day. Okay, yeah, 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 to, me too. Keep going. Uh, yeah, I went out every night. Yeah, you did go out every night. Yeah, I want to talk about that. Put a pin in that. I want to talk about that. Here's my workout today. So, twenty minutes of lunges tonight. Okay, that's roughly three hundred to four hundred lunges. Then four rounds of ten sit ups, ten leg lifts, ten twenty flutter kicks. And that's my workout today. Okay. Who okay. designed this for you? Your trainer? Lacey, my trainer. Okay. And so, um, and I felt fucking, dude, I felt so rudderless without working out. And I'm, I know that, I, I mean, I, last night I said, I was I was taking a jog today and everyone started laughing and I was like, it's like, you assholes actually know I jog. <laughs> but like, I so, my body, that's what my body looks like right now. It's rough. Yeah? Oh, it's rough. It's like... It's doing good in the Midwest, but when I go to Florida, <laughs> when I get like, thank you, Peoria, <laughs> Sioux City, Cedar Rapids, and, and Green Bay. You just look like a regular guy. I, I actually look like I'm in men's health. And then yeah. when I'm in Florida next week, they're going to be like, my friends in Florida are going to be like, oh. It's, yeah, it's, it's bad, man. It, it doesn't look great. And so. What are you up to? I uh, was my, he- my second heaviest I've ever been. And that was a week ago. When I when I was here and we talked ago. about my my weight, yeah, I was the second heaviest I've ever been in my life, two fifty four, and I think not right now, but I think like morning wake up is when I weighed myself. With that says you know you should be your lightest, yeah. That was two fifty four. I think right now at my morning wake up, if I woke up in the morning, I think I'm in the two forties because I'm reaching my ass pretty well. Like that's so that's how I that's how that's how I can tell, and I'm jogging okay, and I am working out. But so. that was only a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Your workout tonight and your friend. Oh, I've been feeling rudderless without being able to lift weights. Yeah. There's something about. Oh, because you stopped because of the arm. Yeah. And I think there's something about weightlifting that allows you to kind of. Um, running is different. Running is kind of like a thing where you do it and you go, I'll do. It's a finite thing where even when you get started, you're like, maybe I'll do one more mile. It's 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 almost yeah. like. But with lifting weights is like you get it on a piece of paper, or at least when I get it on a text of what my workout is, I go, okay, let's just do it. Let's yeah. just get through it. And then you do it and you feel really good. Good sense of accomplishment. Yeah. It's a great sense of accomplishment. It also like really, um, I don't know, it kind of kicks out the, you know, it, it really has an effect on your stress level. Like you can feel it dissipate. I called Leanne. I was in a, such a great mood when I finished. I, uh, those, and then, I understand. They're the bicep girls with three pound weights. Yeah. I felt good that I was following instruction because I didn't want to. I wanted to do ten pound weights. So I was like, I can do ten pounds because I'm, you're you're instructed to keep it at three. Yeah, and so I, and I did three pound weights and I just yeah. did them. And then this morning, my arm like felt a little weird, and I was like, Oh shit, man, I am hurt. Like yeah. I am. I didn't realize how fucked up a sur- We talked about this last time, right? How how traumatic a surgery? No, I talked about this in therapy. Oh, I didn't realize how traumatic a surgery is. Yeah, and then you look at. Like just the idea of going under, coming out, like they almost kill you and then wake you back up, and you've been opened up. Like it's such a traumatic experience that I don't think I put perspective on it. You get done it, and I wonder how many people get get it done and then. Oh, by the way, 
fucking, I got a weight loss advice from a woman today who was like, I was, she's like, I lost 150 pounds. And I was like, really? How'd you do it? She goes, drinking water, cut out Diet Cokes, cut out sodas, cut out all sweets. Oh, and I got lap band surgery. And I was like, cunt. I was yeah. like, fucking start with lap band surgery, yeah, you lead dumb with shit. That, yeah. And I don't want to hear a fucking word out of your mouth. Yeah. I didn't think I realized how traumatic. Wait. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you see that? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my I guess I God. lowered my seat. I think you might not be under the 250 mark. <laughs> Did I just break the seat? <laughs> oh, shit. Can't even get it back up. Hold on. There, I'm okay. losing weight. Okay. How was your weekend? Oh, that was good. Yeah. Was Tell good. me the stuff you did. Because I, I saw it on your Instagram, yeah. other than you sitting in the stairs. <laughs> the dumbest thing I've ever seen about Tell life. Sean. Tell Sean. Who's Sean? Sean's my photographer. I'll let him know. Hey, man, can we stop doing headshots? <laughs> you know what? You know why he does it, though, right? No, I, I do. I, I, I totally I, know. You've hired him, and he's like, hey, man, let's bang out some headshots. No, he's not headshots. He, it's a, there's only so many ways to photograph your performance. Yeah. And, you know, they're creative guys, and he's like, he gets, he's like oh, here's the light. I want to do this. Yeah, so it, it, by the ideas. way, it's not yeah. a bad photo. Yeah. It just, it's like. It looks like a mixtape's going to drop. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. we saw it, and I was like, and and I think uh, Steve Fury goes, "Why well, was Tom in the stairwell?" And I was he like, said, "And there. I was like, I think he moved him to the stairwell." Yeah. And he was like, "Oh yeah," because I was like, "There's a green room. Why would he be sitting in the green room?" Yeah. It was like he walked up on you on the stairwell, like, yeah. "What's up? What's up, man?" Yeah. It it uh it was it made me giggle. I could not stop laughing. And I I've could, been I taking know. pictures in stairwells ever since. Really? Oh yeah. My yeah. You want to see one? There's a picture of you in a really small. Uh, Green Bay Packers jersey. Uh, yeah. And you know, th- I saw that, and do you know what immediately came to mind? What? Season two of Love on the Spectrum is back. Like, as soon <laughs> as I saw it, <laughs> I was like, I got to watch that show again. Do you know the guy, Clinton Dix? Ha ha, Clinton Dix? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he retweeted it. He did? Yeah. He was like, looks good to me. And I was like, that's what I'm fucking talking about. Dude. Fucking Green Bay was a blast. Green Bay was like, and I, I don't mean to like take away from all the other cities that I was in this weekend, yeah. but Green Bay was like a highlight. Really? Y- you know, it's I, hard to believe. It's, it's, well, it's I've been to Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of people feel that way. But it, what's interesting to me is you. I've seen Lambeau Field so much on television yeah. that when I woke up in the morning and I got out of the bus and I saw Lambeau Field. Yeah. And it was right there. It wasn't like Yeah. Even when you see it from the aerial, it seems like it's like surrounded by fences. Yeah. No, I've driven by Lambeau and it is, you know, it's impressive. And then we got a text from the Packers and they're like, hey man, do you want a private tour of Lambeau? And we're like, a hundred percent. Yeah. And it and it was just so cool. And it's by the way, it's it looks brand new. Yeah. And you think it's and you know it's what I found really interesting is the first round of seats are the original seats, right? Mm-hmm. And then the next round was the next round they built. And then they just kept building up and making it better and better. And it's a gorgeous stadium. And to go in and go, we went and saw the visitor's locker room. And then we went to the box seats. And then we went down on the field. It was like, it's cool. it was so cool. And it, you forget there's so many places like that. Like what stadiums you'd like to see a game at? What are, what are your top, like in, in the, like, because what's the one in South in South Carolina? Is it South Car- Clemson. What's Clemson's? Clemson's like the Death Bowl or something. Death Valley. They, Death Valley. They have their own. Death I saw Valley, yeah. I saw a game there and it was the worst experience of my life. It was so fucking hot. Really? It was the hottest day I've ever had in my life. I think in in college. I mean, I definitely want to go to. I'd love to go to an LSU game. I'd love to go to a game in in, in Alabama and Tuscaloosa. I'd love to go to Penn State, Michigan. Yeah, of course, of course. Ohio State. Ohio State. Um, we've done the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Um, you know, I've never actually been to a game in Tallahassee. I'd love to go to to a game there. We're supposed to go next week. Um, I got invited a few years ago to go to the Florida Florida State game, the Thanksgiving weekend game. And I couldn't go. Really? They invited me. They're like, "Oh, we'll give you like sit in the president's suite and all this shit," and I couldn't go. Oh my god, I would have gone in a heartbeat. Yeah, I know. I would have gone in a fucking heart. Why couldn't you go? My fucking stupid family. <laughs> Fuck them. They're not around forever. They go to college. They'll be gone. They don't even care about you. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see a game in uh, in Wrigley Field. 
Yeah, it'd be cool. Never seen a game in Wrigley Field. Um, I went to Fenway. I saw a game there. I'd like to go to Fenway. I've never seen a game at Fenway. I'd like to go to Wembley Stadium. Is that where they play the soccer matches? Is in in England? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see the, some of those. I'd like to go to some of the. It would be cool to go to iconic stadiums. Yeah, or go see Wimbledon. Like that'd be. That'd oh, be I'd right. love to see Wimbledon. I would love to see the Masters. We were in Augusta and we saw where they hold it. I'd love to go to a Masters tournament. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is also brought to you by ShipStation. The holidays are the most wonderful time of the year, but if you're running an online store, you know they can be the craziest time of the year as well. You've got inventory to manage, orders to fill, a growing list of stressed out customers checking in twice a day, wondering whether those last minute gifts will arrive in time. With ShipStation, the hassle of shipping out holiday orders melts away, leaving you with happier customers and more freedom to run your business or some much needed time off. I love the way it consolidates everything. If you sell anything online, I don't need to tell you that shipping can be super frustrating. There are so many carriers and a ton of factors that go into it. And with more people shopping online every year, the added holiday stress does not help. ShipStation makes shipping the easiest part of running your online store. Make the holiday season a little brighter with ShipStation. Use our offer code CAVE to get a 60-day free trial, just enough time to handle the holiday rush. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter CAVE ShipStation. Make ship happen. On stage. I got drunk on stage last night. You did? I got legit drunk on stage. What, which city was it? Sioux City. I got legit drunk on stage for the second show, and I, uh, I, I had a drink on the first show. I, I, you know what it is? I, I, mean, I don't know if you ever felt this way, but you get like the beginning into your act, and you're like, you're like, I feel like I'm in rote. Like I feel I'm not. I'm not being creative. I'm just doing the same fucking thing. Yeah. And I and I'd done that a couple times and yes. gotten through it. And I was like, and then the second first show last night, I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. I want it to be fun for me and yeah. them. Yeah. And so I had a drink. I said, let's fucking have a little cocktail. I had a drink, and then I enjoyed it, and we had a really great first show. And you Second, changed it up. I changed it up. I, what happens for me is if I drink on stage, this is not, I mean, I'm not giving anyone comedy advice, but like if anyone's young and listening, sometimes if you get drunk and go on stage, you will fuck your act up, and you'll force yourself to write in the moment. If you're in rote, if you're doing the same act every fucking night, yeah. get drunk one night. Go on stage with that same act. You will fuck it up, and you'll force yourself to write in the moment. So that's what I do sometimes. So then second show... I went up with a drink, and I just started drinking immediately. I had a second one on stage. I, I had three drinks by the end of the show. Three drinks. And I had so much fucking fun. You just hammered. Yeah. Although I said a couple of regrettable things where they were like, where you're like, uh, What about? Uh, someone, I don't know. Well, of course, some guy in the back's like, Bert, fuck Joe Biden, right? And I'm like, oh, man, I don't fucking... <laughs> Like, you know, it's like don't don't do that to me. You're I know like, your camera's out. I know that, <laughs> that, and then that becomes. So I just like I was like, whatever, dude, whatever. I, I love that. that's that's definitely your crowd. <laughs> uh, hey, fuckface, that's your crowd too. You think we have different fucking crowds? Yes. Oh, we really? Do. Yeah, really? Yeah. You think your crowds don't grow beards? <laughs> yeah. Who's watching this show that goes, I just go to see Tom. <laughs> no, no, right? There's different people that go to different shows, though. Yeah, yeah, I got, definitely got a fuck Joe Biden. I got a, uh, and then one guy goes, hey, Bert, would you kill baby Hitler? And my answer, just <sighs> if, if recorded, will not come out right. Because I was like, no, I would never kill a baby. I go, I'd kill Hitler's dad. Because I think he was the problem of hit, the root of, everyone's cause. Everyone was like, Oh, interesting. And I think everyone just wanted to be like, I'd fuck that baby in the ass. Yeah, yeah. And be like, yeah, I'll fucking kill baby Hitler. But whatever. So like that was something I said that I'm was sure. Is that one of your bits? No. No, kill. is that an old bit that you'd fuck babies? You'd fuck. Uh... I'm sure I've said that. <laughs> I'm almost certain I've said that. Okay. Um, But yeah, so, so that was like. It was one of the things I said, and then I said something. I have a, I had a, I have a joke that I, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but the idea is that uh, women are to blame for catcalling. <laughs> it's a yeah. pre- it was a fucking, you know, obviously it's a faulty premise that you yeah. rework, and and uh, and then at the end I said, I said it's, it's like I go, you're Afghanistan, you guys need to smoke out Al Qaeda, and everyone went ooh because you're saying words that they don't understand, yeah, like they don't understand why that why that is, right? Or I said actually I said. It's like your Afghanistan and Pakistan, and you need to smoke out Af- uh, Al Qaeda. And everyone groaned, and I was like, "Oh, come on, guys! You you understand that's right, like politically right, like historically right." And they're like, "Ooh!" And I was like, "Okay." And so then, 
That's when you're. This is, this is when I was like, I wish I was not drinking right now because I gave him a lesson. I was like, okay, the Mujahideen came over, took over everything, and the Russians said, let's kill the children and the women, and then the, they will break their spirits. So they started killing children and women. So the Mujahideen moved all the children and women to Pakistan, and they became students in, in private schools, not private schools, but private schools in, in Pakistan. And the word for student in Pakistan is Al Qaeda. That's the fucking word. Is it Al Qaeda? Is Al Qaeda the one in Pakistan right now? Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? What's the word for student? What's Al Qaeda mean? Is it Al Qaeda? Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. Yeah, isn't that? Um, what's the... the one? What's the one that we're fighting in Pakistan? Is that Al Qaeda or is it? No, I think it's Al Qaeda. Well, Al Qaeda is like a terrorist organization. Whatever. Ur anyway, Urdu is what they speak in Pakistan. That's the language. No, but the, 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 oh god damn it. This is why you should not drink and talk. This is why you shouldn't learn anything new. This is why you shouldn't learn anything new. Those lines in the sand were drawn by fucking Brits just to split up people of the same color and the same race and nationality, like, and the same religion, so that they could control them. And so Pakistan, there's really no difference on the border of Pakistan and Afghanistan at all between the people. They're the same fucking people. So when... Afghanistan, when the Mujahideen kicked out their women and children, they sent them to Pakistan, and they turned them into students. And I, maybe it's Taliban. Who's running out Afghanistan right now? The Taliban? Yeah. The Taliban is what I said last night, I'm sure. The Taliban is the name for student or whatever. And so all those people were ingrained in fucking that Sharia law and all that shit. This and is your new hour? No. This is why I fucking... This is why I should never drink on stage. I was so fucking exhausted. The birdie boy relapse tour. Get tickets. <laughs> yeah, guys. If you want to learn about imperialism and I fucking love it. I was fucking. I was oh, on. A, I was shit. on a I had, that was the. And then we did a question and answer period yeah, in I the just, middle of the set. I would love to have a shot of that speech and then like the, the crowd. And then it turns back to you. And there's a shirtless guy with a fucking drink. Shirtless, being like the Mujahideen. <laughs> The Russians were brute, brute. I went through a big period when the whole fucking Afghanistan shit went down where I learned everything. Yeah, I believe. And you shouldn't learn it because you don't learn it right. And then you next thing you know, you're fucking saying the wrong goddamn words. I'm drinking. Fuck it. I'm drinking. Do it. I know my brand. Yeah. Oh. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel amazing. I actually feel amazing. I like these podcasts better when I fly here. Yeah? Yeah. I wish I don't like this studio so much. We're getting the other ones on the, on its way. Like how close? Well, I mean, they got permit. It's under construction. Yeah. What if we got a... Okay. I think they're a more, little more live. Because I, I feel like I we live life and then we come back. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know? As opposed to just... Especially when we were in the pandemic, when you just sat in your house and they showed up, I think yeah. our podcast is getting better. I believe, I think so too. Oh, I didn't tell you because um, I was in Seattle. Yes, have you been to Starbucks Reserve? Uh -uh. You know, people we know Starbucks is like a big corporate chain, and you're like, eh, as far as, but they have a, a thing called Starbucks Reserve, which is like a whole fucking coffee experience where they have a bar where they make coffee infused cocktails. That's where you were. Yeah, I texted you. And I said, where, where, where are you going on the, on this trip? Like you seem to have like these lavish tours. Oh, I went to the and shop. The, and you're like, you're like, what do you mean? I go, I don't know. Were you at like a fucking roastery and you're, or something? And you were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a couple things. And I was like, this is what the fuck I'm talking about. You no, did these no, 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 no. See, no, no, no. You, this is how your brain works. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> what? See, let me just tell oh. you like, so, so that people know how you report things is so insane. Okay. Cause Listen, this is why I'm not a journalist. I, you bet. This is why I'm not a historian. I'm a comic. I tell you what you need to know this is like, and how you need to know it. This is, this is how the texts come through from Bert. All right. So Bert sends a text. For the first one, you just out of nowhere yesterday, says, any plans Monday night? And that's it. Did I, right. Wait, where is this? Then the next thing you text is, we have to talk about the tours Tom took. So I write, what tours? Yeah. And then you write, this car place and the coffee roaster. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, the coffee roaster is Starbucks Reserve. So you went to a Starbucks Reserve. Yeah. I saw that. Which was unbelievable if you, here's the thing. I thought it was just like, 
a branding marketing thing where they go, no, no, this is like coffee you don't buy in regular Starbucks and you're going to get it and you're going to be like, oh, it's just another coffee. Like it's just going to taste like coffee. Well, I like cold brews and everything. They had a uh, cold brew that's um, made in a whiskey and barrel. And I was like, oh, that sounds unique. But again, I was expecting it just to be like, oh, it tastes like cold brew. One of the fucking best things I've ever tried in my life. For real? Yeah. So where are these They're randomly, reserves? there's a few. I mean, in Seattle, I don't know how many are in, are in Seattle. I think there's at least two or three. Um, but it's a fucking ride. And then they have really? full fucking um, pastry shop. Uh, they make it. They make Italian food. They really? make all. Yeah, it was fucking impressive. I actually was like, Are there any in Washington D.C., New York, or Boston? I don't know because that's where I'm going to be next. And I would love to go to. A, how many I would put love Starbucks to have... locations. Just add one word to that and see how many there are. Is that is that all the locations? There's got to be one in New York. Right? Uh, there's definitely some in L.A. So Seattle, but Shanghai, Milano, New York, Tokyo, Chicago. All right, I'm going to one in New York. Yeah, hit find a find a location. Is there, a, is there a Los Angeles one? I'm in New York. I'm in New York this week. I wanna, I'm going to go to the one in New York. I'm in Madison Square Garden this week. That's all the reserves? Yeah, there's a bunch, man. Holy shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> those are all in L.A.? Wait. Wait. Is, each of those is a reserve? It says featuring reserve? No, that, that, no. that's not the same thing. Like a diff- the one that I went to definitely didn't look as crazy as the Seattle pictures. That yeah, we no, just no, no, no. So you go in, you go in, and they got like you get you go in and you're met, you're met with like a greeter. Wait, start start at the beginning. Yeah. You walk in. Does it smell better than a Starbucks? It, everything's better, really. I mean the the building, the 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 font, and of what the is lettering. It? Do you have the, to the, reserve it and no, pay no, for it. Not at all. Anybody can walk in, but you walk in. And it's like walking into. It's like if you were a fan of, let's say, uh, you know. I don't know, like Ferraris, and you go into like this is the Ferrari official Ferrari store. Like it's a it's an ex, it's a fan experience, which so, you also did kind of keep going. Well, oh, so those were pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but when you get to Starbucks Reserve, you're met by a greeter who's like, it's not like when you walk in and they're like, "Thanks for coming, start A guy who's like, "Have you been here before?" And you're like, "No." It's like the Apple Store. Yes. Okay. And he's like, "Oh, let me just like give you the layout," and you're like, "Okay," and it's it's an enormous space. There's a bar. He's like, if you want cocktails, I was like, yeah. He said, like, that's all coffee oh, infused coffee cocktails? cocktails. Yeah, coffee cocktails. All coffee cocktails. Yeah, like shots and stuff. Everything. Oh all these like, God. and there's a mixologist there, oh like just God. making coffee. coffee. Shots would be the greatest thing in the world. Oh, it's so good. And then he's like, like a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of coffee, and just a over mix. there is like uh, a full like um, Italian chef making. Hey, Annie, grab me one of those uh, g- g- those Guinnesses. I want to try a coffee Guinness. Good, good idea. Like how my brain works? You yeah. gotta like how my brain works. I love how your brain works. Okay, okay, yeah. keep going, keep going. So they're making uh, Italian food, you know, because like the origin of all this is that that, what is it, Howard Schultz or whatever was, I think he was in Italy. And so it's all like, they're supposed to, it was all supposed to be an Italian inspiration originally. Okay. So it's all Italian food there. And then they have this crazy bakery where they're just pulling out all these fresh baked, you know, pastries, oh croissants. God. Oh uh, my God. Excuse me, uh, uh, Cornetis. Um, and then they tell us about, we're like, we're like we just want to get coffees. Like, what kind of coffees do you like? I like cold brew and I like espressos. He's like, get in this line. It's going to wrap around here. There's like a 15 minute wait in this line. And there are coffees that. Nadav, I'm going straight to the fucking dome. I figure I just pour it in here half and half, right? What's See if we like it. It's, it's, it's basically it's a, bit, a little mixer. I mean, you might want to do it in the cup first. Nope, 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 nope. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna kill a little bit of this, okay. right? Okay. And then we'll go Guinness and Starbucks. See what we think. I think we're gonna like this. You know, what this reminds me of those uh, spring break. Those documentaries. <laughs> those documentaries where they're like, and then I just started drinking mouthwash. <laughs> Do you want to try it first? Or do you want me to try it? I think you should try it first. Should I stir it? Do you think? Listen to Annie's going. That doesn't seem like a bad idea. Okay. It's my finger, guys, and you'll be the one trying it only. I'm not certain it's that bad <laughs> or good. <laughs> Annie, do you have cream? Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, I got cream. I'll send it for let's, you. Let's try it. Okay, here we go. Guinness and Starbucks. It's really fucking good. <laughs> it is surprisingly good. Tommy, I know I put my finger in it. You got to try it. It's really fucking good. Tommy, it's really... No, no, doesn't need cream. It actually sweetens up a black coffee. Tommy, you got to try it. It's really fucking good. It's... I'm being... Take a big sip. Take a big sip. It's really fucking good. It tastes like a Guinness. Just it's kind of like toned down a bit. I think I just came up with something genius. I'm like super excited. I think you're going to love it. Try it. Try it. Try it. <laughs> Homie, you just made a coffee stout. <laughs> You love all your own ideas. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like liking pictures of yourself when you go on vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a big sip. It's really good. It tastes like... It's not that bad. No, you know what it tastes like? What? Like somebody went to pour a beer and something. They're like, oh, was this not beer? <laughs> it does have that taste. It does have that taste where yeah. you're like, Did, oh, you know what it tastes like? You know what it tastes like? like it's you like, put ice in your beer. Yeah, yeah. It does like, taste like it's like a watered down beer. Or somebody's like, I'm pouring a beer and they're like, no, it's my Diet Coke. They're like, well, it's fucking got beer in it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got beer in it yeah, now. Yeah. That's exactly what it tastes like. By the way, this might be a great pre grain cocktail. Pre grain cocktail? Pre -game, co game cocktail. You need to see a neurologist. I fucking <laughs> might need to. <laughs> This is this is actually really fucking good. Yeah. Anyone try it? I mean, I'll pour it in a cup so you don't have to suck <laughs> our lips. No, please don't pour it in a cup. Uh, I'll I'll do it. Yeah. I'll I mean, it. I think you're gonna like it because you're a big fan of Guinness. It's, it's interesting to me that any likes to have a beer in the afternoon, like to, like relax. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not that guy. Like I'm obviously I'm that guy. Hold on. Oh, let me let me do it. Uh, let me do it away from the electronics. No, let me do it because I don't want to lose too much ice. Okay. All right. <laughs> he needs to drink all of this. By the way, I don't know what you're talking about. Any, I think you're going to like it, and I'm putting headsets on. I want to hear your reaction. Oh, right. You can't hear me. Yeah. Now I can hear you. Yeah, by the way, I don't know what you're talking about with this, um, this like, tropical vodka shit you got. You don't like it? No, dude, I'm fucking, I'm fucked up. <laughs> oh, for real? Oh, from this? From one, yeah. Oh, well, maybe we're different human beings. <laughs> I think so. I mean, my <laughs> metabolism is Any, get ready for a fucking Starbucks and Guinness. All right, let me try it. I mean, this is, this is a coffee stout, isn't it? This is basically what this is? Oh, did I just reinvent the wheel? <laughs> reinvent? <laughs> Tastes good, right? I mean, right? it's not bad. It's yeah. not bad. You taste it. You yeah. taste the Guinness. You taste the coffee. It's kind of nice. I mean, I'm I'm a fan of stouts though. That's that's the thing though. I I like this. I feel like I would like both things, you know, separately. So together, it's just like it's a better mixture. Yeah. yeah. How unusable? Like how unusable do you think the next episode is going to be that we record <laughs> when I'm hammered? It's going to be something. This podcast is brought to you by Raycon. There's so much going on in the world these days. That there's stuff you're excited about, like uh, like history. I love history. Or stuff you don't want to think about, like being on the road away from your family. What's great for me is putting in a pair of Raycon headsets and dipping out on my bus. You can't just play your phone the way I do at home. I just play the phone and it just plays all night. And these Raycon earbuds are super tiny, so you can lay on bed and you barely feel them. And now they have a new improved rubber oil look and they feel fantastic. Um, here's what's great. These Raycons offer eight hours of playtime with a 32 hour play life, uh, battery life. And there's a built-in mic so you can use the earbuds and, as a phone. And because they're half the price, you can buy two so you never have a pair uncharged. I keep a pair. I keep two pairs on my treadmill. I keep two pairs in my bus and two pairs by my bed. And they come with a 45-day happiness guaranteed uh, guarantee. Right now, two bears, one cable listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash bears. That's buyraycon.com slash bears to save 15% off Raycon. By Raycon.com slash bears. This episode of Two Bears One Cave is also brought to you by Policy Genius. There's a lot to be thankful for, like how Policy Genius can check if you're paying too much for home and auto insurance. I'm telling you something, they make it super easy. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare the home and auto insurance all in one place. They can help you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now 
but at a lower price. They've saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they're paying for home and auto insurance. Their team will handle the paperwork to set you up with your new policy and switch over to your current one. And to me, that is easily the best part of, the, of working with Policy Genius. They're going to do that work you don't want to do. Getting started is easy. You, you head over to policygenius.com slash cave, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property, and then they take it from there. They'll compare the rates from all the top insurers, and if you're ready to switch over, they'll do that paperwork for you. Head to policygenius.com slash cave to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. So uh, I'm going to take these off. Um, Sweet. Go back to your Starbucks experience. Okay. Because I think they could, they would have me as a mixologist. Because I like this idea yeah, of yeah. mixing, infusing cocktails with whatnots. Yeah. So um, they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually have like the roasting stuff. They're like those huge fucking, I don't know, like it looks like you're at an actual coffee plant. Yeah. But then in the coffee line, they have coffees that are not available at a Starbucks. That's what I, we got in line for. I was like. I want to see how different. I thought it was going to be like, you know, when you get a, when you go to a coffee place and they're like, do you want Ethiopian or Colombian blend? And you're like, I don't know, a fucking cup of yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah. And you try it and you're like, that was good. I thought that was what they meant. But that cold brew with the whiskey barrel was a fucking ride. Like it was a treat. It was a, unlike anything I'd ever tried. And then I got espresso. I was like, I want to get an espresso you can't get at another. How much place. of these drinks are they really? No. And by the way, are you super buzzed from coffee? No, no, no. You no. don't get buzz from coffee, though, do you? I mean, I can I can drink too much coffee and get anxiety. Yeah, like you're like, oh shit, I'm my me, fucking heart rate. To me. Yeah, yeah, but I I'm not at that level. I mean, I only had a little bit of coffee in the morning, so I was ready for a coffee. It was great, man. It was. What fucking, time did you guys go? We probably walked up there from the hotel around uh, ten ten thirty, something like that. You know? Okay. Yeah, and then like we we've been up for a little bit, and we went out there, and then we just walked around that area, like that whole I forget the area that it's called in Seattle, and then went the to some stores. zone or something. The demilitarized zone. Yeah. By the yeah. way, I'm already buzzed as fuck. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One episode today, maybe. <laughs> keep going. Keep okay, going. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, then we went uh, to stores. I think there was a throwback sports store that had like you know. Did you buy anything? Yeah, I got. Well, I got one of the. They had, I got a Sean Kemp T-shirt that's yeah. uh, too big, but I was like, I don't. Get, they didn't have any other sizes. I was like, fuck it, I'll get it anyways. And um, <laughs> I got a Supersonics uh, shirt. Yeah, shit like that. And then I was gonna get this No Limit shirt with Master P and like all these guys on it, and they're like, oh, it's four hundred dollars. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, it's um, these throwback, uh, like rap shirts are. I forget what it is, but they're with the print. It's like they're they're in they're very rare and they're in high demand. It's and amazing that there's someone I was like, that no. knows that. I I know the guy explained to me to it. He told me that it was a repress of the design that the shirt had actually deteriorated. So, but they were able to salvage the print. But I didn't get it. I was like, I'm not paying four hundred dollars for a fucking no limit T-shirt. Yeah, so that's a good call. Yeah. The wait. So then now tell me about cigars. You and Jeff got cigars. Oh my god, this has happened. Uh, this probably happens to you. I'm assuming too. No. Where. Dude, my, I, now that you're saying this, I, I really do think our fans are different humans. Because, like, it, like I, my, I don't, I, I mean, I think, I think, like, I cook out at, in front of my bus. We grill out on a, in a hibachi that we got for twenty dollars in front of my bus, and we get really excited for it. Like, we don't go to get cigar. We, I, oddly enough, man, and I know people probably think differently. I don't go out much. Like when we do it on tour, I'm kind of like in the bus. Like, okay. But I, I think because I'm like. I'm nervous about. I'm still nervous about coronavirus. You know. You are. I am. Okay. I'm still nervous. I'm just. I feel bad. I would feel horrible contracting it at a club or at a, at a theater, and then and then just spreading it around. Mm -hmm. So I'm. I'm. I mean, I'm not. I'm not overselling this, but I'm pretty cautious. Like when I do pictures, it's a selfie, and then I stand behind them, and we stay distant. Yeah. Like I don't do meet and greets. Um, I don't go out to bars. We go back to the bus but i think also we're conditioned because we were doing that during the pandemic so it's like fine for us we'll like get movies we saw precious gems Ooh, write precious gems down we'll talk about it in the next episode you mean uncut you gems? It? yeah i just saw precious gems holy fuck we'll talk about it now not right now we're not right now but so yeah so like i don't go to cigar bars i don't go to like i don't go and hang out i really don't am i being overly cautious you're fine like like how like so what I meant first of all is that ever since I just mentioned that I I I am not an aficionado, 
but I enjoy what? a cigar. But I, I'm saying like I'm not like some expert. I enjoy a cigar from time to time. So I mentioned that to my tour manager once, dude. He'll tell any venue. He's like, Tom loves cigars. So there's like these fucking. I go to the oh, green room and they'll be like, I'm a pussy aficionado. Yeah. Hey, Peter, write that down. <laughs> yeah. There's always these crazy uh, spreads. And then they hook up cigar lounges all the time. Wait, for real? Yeah. So, you have but, like a cigar spread at your fucking green room? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. God, we tour so very differently. Yeah, yeah. But then. But we, and we also tour so globally differently. I, I also go to like lounges for hanging out. I don't go to like a fucking party. You know what I mean? But no, hold on. I I got to talk to you about this off camera. I don't think I can talk to you about it on here. Uh, but okay, I don't do anything crazy though, man. I know, but I, I okay. All right, we're definitely talking about this off camera. Okay. Um. So wait, sweet. I do. I do. I do. Uh, bring people out. Like I, I told you this last year that it was a great yeah 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 yeah. So I did that this weekend. I brought uh, Matt Farah and his wife, the smoking tire, like my auto journalist friend. So he um, is he based out of Seattle? No, I, I flew him up. No way. Yeah. So uh, nice. to hang out though, yeah, like that's it's, cool. it's fun to hang out, and you like, hey, you know, we get breakfast. We go to. I went to that museum, the uh, Museum of Pop Culture there, which was fucking another cool thing we did. Hold um, on, and then we, we are doing. Oh, man. But also, also, you got to remember something. I was in Seattle. So I'm in one of America's fucking yeah. great cities. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's different. You were in fucking Green Bay. You know what I mean? It's well, not I, my, like, my, I think my, my weekend was pretty still pretty fucking awesome. Well, okay. But then. hold on, hold on, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I want to go through your weekend because I'm like blown away that. So you fly Matt and his wife up, which is a brilliant idea in yeah. my opinion because that guy has been very 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 cool and generous to you and also he's a great guy he's and, a great guy and, he's a great guy yeah. but he's he like he you're into the shit he's into yeah. so you guys can sit and talk all day oh yeah yeah so so then so then you guys get up there he's like a, a fucking car savant though. he knows everything about cars it's i remember insane. listening to him on rogan i'm not into cars yeah and i got into cars yeah because he was into cars it's the other level yeah. yeah and so and rogan's into cars like yes. you guys are all into cars and so that makes total sense and you guys went to that car museum. Did no, we, we actually went to So he has a place, um, Matt does, in L.A. called uh, West, West Side Car Collectors. I think it's WSCC. It's a car storage facility, right? So like when oh, you go like, wow. I want to, st- either you have, don't have the space for your cars yeah. or if you're a, a so that's, transplant. So you were in L.A. in that? No, in L.A., in LA, I went. I've seen his place because it's cool. It's just like it's it's basically stacks, and it's also there's a like a um, what's it called um, like a club membership style thing there too, where like you can go and like hang out, like smoke a cigar, have a drink, uh, lounge. So these this is a type of business that exists in a lot of big cities, not a lot, but like yeah. a number of cities where they have car storage and then some type of social aspect to it. So in Seattle, it's called the shop. And so we uh, and and Matt and that guy his names Matt as well know each other. So we just went and checked out his place. So there's hundreds of cars there. Pulled up, pulled up, Eddie. But there's also like a restaurant, and and you know what I mean. It's uh yeah. It's a country so place. you saw some badass fucking cars. Go to Seattle. Yeah. So is it all sports cars? Not all. No, no. There was a lot of Broncos, and there was um you know there's like classics. There's like old BMWs, like uh. CS and and they have uh, the old GMC Jimmy. It's like more you know that type the of GMC vehicles. Are great they're great. Car. There's some old Volkswagen buses, but then there's all supercars. You know, there's like see that's the thing. That's the thing I like about car people. I like when car people get into like they've got a brand like like Fluffy's into. Um, He's into those. I, I sent him the picture. There was a there was a Volkswagen bus there. I, yeah, I texted him. Like that. Yeah, and then you that, start knowing which of your friends would like that yeah. car. Like I, I like those. I like those old Broncos. Um, I do too. I, I follow a bunch of uh, vintage Broncos. Is one of the ones I follow. And then I, Joe's. Yeah, he's got icon. icon. He's got the icon. Yeah, I, I like those old Broncos. I my car. I, and I, I, I don't know. I really don't know what my car, my vintage car, would be that I would want to get. I wish I was more. You know, I, I think it's because I drink. I don't drive very often, so I don't like. 
I, I so I don't like I I feel sad for rappers when I realize they have to buy a nice car because that's part of the culture. Mm -hmm. You have to buy a nice car, and then you have to be the one driving it. I'm like, what the fuck? Makes no sense to me. Yeah, you know, I heard of a guy, a guy, a rapper had a Maybach, Maybach mm -hmm. and he, uh, he got. By the way, there's been a, just this is a really the quick aside. Everyone calls them Maybach, and then I think in Germany they'd say to call them Mybox. Mybox. But everybody here calls them Maybachs. Okay. Just a, I'm just all right, go ahead. Okay. So I feel like you're. I feel like you're mansplaining me. I am. I feel like I'm in the middle of your show last night. So, Guys, <laughs> it's my Bach. So I'm at the mine Bach? Yeah. I'm, no, so there's a, but I, I saw a rapper. He got like, I guess pulled over or something. I, it was a video and like he got pulled over in his my Bach. And I was like, I was like, I was like, that's his car. Like, if I got that car, I'd also get a driver. Like, that's, that's a car to be driven in. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why would you drive that fucking car? Or like a crazy Rolls. Yeah. Like. I think they're missing the point. It's like there was no there was no insight. Yeah. They just looked at the price tag and go, that's the nice car. I want it. Yeah. And then they sat in the fucking front seat. Yeah. You and you're like, like, you're the chauffeur. You're like, hey, man. Yeah. And you guys, guys ride in the back. And all his buddies in the back are like, don't tell him. <laughs> we should be driving. <laughs> like, it's so silly to yeah. me. Yeah. But I think that's what I would. I would would you get a driver? I would love a driver. I would love a driver. And like a nice, comfy car. Escalade or something, right? Like, you know, I've actually, I've actually thought about this. When, when I, when I had to get my car, I was leasing my car. I was actually toying with the idea of going, like, let's break down money and think, how much do I spend on Ubers when I'm in LA? Thank God I didn't do this because it was during the pandemic, right? Yeah, I got it right before the. Oh, I got it right in the beginning of the pandemic, and so I would have never used it. But I was like, I use Ubers all the time. I always use Ubers. Yeah. If we go out to eat, I use Ubers. Like, if we're all going out to eat, I, I go, Glenn, let's enjoy ourselves. Like, get some wine. Let's Uber there. Get a nice, like, get an SUV, which is, by the way, it's way too fucking pricey. I've been, I've always just done SUVs. There's so much more than just a fucking, fucking regular car. And so, but I've always done SUVs. So I was like, I want an SUV. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, fuck it. I'll ride with fucking Miguel in a fucking van. And so... It's it's like fucking fifty dollars more to just talk to a dude. Yeah, and so, uh, and but I was like, I would love a driver. I would love a driver. Can I tell you the one I really want? I really want the driver from Cannonball Two, where the where the orangutan drove. Do you ever see the orangutan drive? Oh the yeah, car yeah, 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 yeah. Where he's outside the car. Yeah. That's what I want. Like I would love to do some real gangster Hollywood shit where you get the driver that's got to ride outside your car and you're in a little bubble. I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> You should would, have a driver. I would love a driver. I would love a driver. I, I never drive. I never drive. I told you, I've had the same tank of gas in my car for seven months. That's insane. I, I just, I don't, I never drive it. I'm never, I never drive it. I mean, that car's not going to run pretty soon. I, I actually am worried about that because I, I didn't last time I was like, so how, how much do you have to clean out gas? <laughs> Like it's got you got you should drive a car, right? You should turn it on at least once a week, maybe every two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And no one right. will drive it. Why? Leanne likes her car. Georgia likes her car. No one wants to drive my car. So my car just sits there. I, I should never gotten a car. I really should never gotten a car. And I actually thought about that. I was like, you know. Why don't we put out. Um, oh, this is fun. I love when you do this. I love when you do this. Let's put out a, a, a message. Yeah. Who in LA would like to be Bert's full time driver? I'm not opposed to this. I know. Now look, we're gonna vet somebody. There can't be a fucking lunatic, obviously. Can I tell you today? I was like, we want a safe driving record, no more than one or two DUIs in the past, and then um, age range. I, I I got a better idea. Okay. So Hooters used to have an airlines, right? Ho Hooters. Hooters. Yeah. So Hooters had an airlines. There are still Hooters planes out there. I'm certain of it. Okay. Hooters. I'm talking to camera right now. Hooters. If you would like a sponsorship on Two Bears One Cave. Please find me from L.A. to Austin every week to do this goddamn podcast. Right? Yeah. They've got to have Hooters planes. There they are. Right? And the, you know planes last forever. They, they don't do. go bad. Nope. So get a Hooters plane. Yeah, they're we'll not, do, it's, do, it's not milk. It's a plane. Yeah. yeah. And, no, but the planes last for fucking ever. I know. And so look at this. They've got Hooters planes all over the fucking world. Hooters, I first of all, I'm a big fan of your food. I've always have been a fan of your food. I'll do whatever you guys want. We'll read a, a, an ad on here. We'll promote Hooters for in perpetuity while Tom lives in this fucking city. 
and all you got to do is just get me a Hooters plane to fly me back and forth, right? Got it. Yeah, perfect. And then and then we'll you can obviously bring food on the plane. Mm-hmm. I'll eat food on the plane. We'll do commercials on the plane, social media on the plane, whatever the fuck you want. It's just I would love to go fly on a Hooters. I was like, how great would it be if you roll up, you got a Hooters plane, yeah. bunch of Hooters fucking. Which is stand outside. They're like, what's up, B-Man? You're like, hey. And they got pitchers of beer. You get on a plane with a pitcher of beer. And then they go, Bert, Buffalo Shrimp? I go, you know the B-Man. And so we start murdering Buffalo Shrimp, right? We got you breaded. We got you unbreaded. We got your fries. We got the flounder sandwich, the grouper sandwich. We got everything, Bert. You ready? And I'm like, we're going to fucking have a blast. And then we roll in here deep, right? I got five Hooter waitresses with me. Uh And we just come in. We're like, hey, guys. Let's bang a couple out, right? Yeah. And then we bang a couple out, right? And I'm like, ladies, back on the Hooters plane. And we fly to Tampa or wherever, LA, whatever. Okay. That's a, a sincere pitch to Hooters. If Hooters is into it, I know there's got to be a guy. But they don't have the planes they've anymore. Gotta, they've got to have a guy who's in charge of Hooters that's got one fucking plane. There's a guy holding on to one fucking plane. <laughs> You know that, right? Okay. You know there's one fucking guy who still wears jean shorts who's got one fucking plane. Yeah. And he's like, God damn it, he fucking knows I got a plane. <laughs> What's a, we'll do a Hooters read. What is, it's got to be, it's got to be, dude, for the year? I mean, come on. Why don't we reach out to Hooters? <laughs> Hooters. Okay, name it. But here's the deal. I don't want, I, this is what I want. Hooters is the only thing I can think of that makes sense. Okay. I was thinking of maybe a company that's in the aviation business right now, like in transportation, actively, as opposed to making the Hooters guy fire up his plane. What about a plane company that's like, we fly people? Okay, okay. No, I like what you're thinking. This okay. is why we're a team. Okay. This is why we're a team. So I was thinking like- Budweiser, Budweiser. Or- Budweiser has to have a Budweiser private jet with a big Budweiser sign They on. definitely do. But I, I was thinking maybe like- Wheels up. What the fuck's wheels up? They fly people on planes. They're okay. a plane company. Okay, why don't we just get a fucking organ delivery company to send me out on fucking, and I'll bring a liver here for someone. Here you go. I'm going to go do a podcast. <laughs> this is the dumbest fucking idea. You need to work with me or against me, okay? Fuck. Hooters is our fucking deal. Okay. McDonald's, Hooters. We need big Bud- brands. Budweiser. Let's go to Budweiser. Budweiser. Yeah. Uh, fucking... Uh, any alcohol sponsor, like Tito's has to have a, Tito's is located here. Why don't we do it at Tito's? See if there's a Tito's jet, but it's got to have Tito's on the side of it. Okay. Like, and it needs to be like a 737. I don't know. That they no, would, but that's how that works. They don't have a 737. Does Tito have a private jet? Oh. No. Oh. Doesn't look oh like God. it. You realize I'd be dead in a fucking month right. if I was flying on the Tito's private jet. We've all got that oddly specific thing we're good at, but no one's great at everything. Well, Fiverr connects you with the best in-class freelancers with experience in hundreds of digital specialties and every skill imaginable to help you with any product. From data, data, data wizards that can turn out spreadsheets into insights to voice actors that bring scripts to life and everything in between. Fiverr's global network of on-demand freelancers is here to help. Whether you're looking for a graphic designer, a copywriter, a marketing, web programming, film editing, score music, and more, find your talent and begin working on projects within minutes. And what's great, you find what you're looking for easy and instantly. No more guessing games. You know exactly what you're paying for up front. No negotiation needed. Pricing's always project-based, and they have 24-hour, seven days a week customer service. Reach out with questions anytime, anywhere. Find a freelancer with a specific skill you need for your next project. Check out Fiverr.com and receive 10% off your first order by using our code CAVE. Find all the digital services you need in one place at F-I-V-E-R-R.com, code CAVE. Again, that's Fiverr, and the code is CAVE. Again, that's Fiverr.com, and the code is CAVE. My point is, I just was like, I'm flying back and forth a lot, and I just would love some corporate sponsorship where I could do one read on the podcast, and then they would fly me. Is that a, t- is that a Hooters jet? No, it's just a- if Jet Suite, by the way, Jet Suite would be a good one. Okay, Jet Suite. If you could just fly Wait, Austin to, don't. they fly Austin to Dallas. They don't fly Austin to L.A. They don't. No, not yet. And by the way, Jet Suite, start that business and end. And by the way, uh, that's a horrible fucking idea. What is Jet Suite's actually? I'll, I'll do a read for Jet Suite right now. They're very affordable. They are very affordable, and you kind of fly. 
it's like the private experience, I guess. But you like you you go to a, your own terminal, your own hangar, you hang out, you relax. It's not like fucking crazy. TSA is cool, you know. That you just go through, just kind of check you, and then you get on the fucking plane, and it's and it's actually very affordable. Like I I, I it's like. I'm not gonna say exact numbers. I'm sure I'm wrong, but like I think it was like two hundred dollars to fly to Vegas. Which, <laughs> now granted, see what it is to fly. See, fucking call this motherfucker a liar. What? See what it is to call. See what it is to fly. Fucking jet suite, L.A. to Vegas, Burbank you, to Vegas. You are on one today. Jet suite to Vegas. <laughs> jet suite to Vegas. Jet suite to Vegas. Two hundred forty dollars. Two hundred forty dollars. Okay. All right. Two hundred forty dollars. Okay. Let's do it. Jet suite X. All right. All right. Let's, let's plan a trip. Now, actually, go ahead and actually book a flight. Jet Suite, not Jet X. No, no, no. Jet no, Suite. Okay, okay, okay. No, I got Nadav's working against me right now. My fucking accountability buddy's trying to fuck me in the ass. Once again, you're on Jet X, Nadav. Jet Suite. JXS, I think it's called. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will say you were right. You were right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Going to Vegas. Pick a, yeah, yeah. Pick a weekend. Pick a weekend. Yeah, pick a weekend. there you go. No, no, do a fucking weekday. That's uh, let's see what that price is. Well, I mean, I, I'm seeing all the prices. Yeah, go Friday. Prices. Go on a Friday. Go Friday. Go, Friday. go Friday. go Friday. Go this Friday. Okay, and come back Sunday. Come back Sunday. All right. Hundred and seventy nine dollars. No, oh, seven hundred and nineteen dollars. My bad. Okay. But that's round trip. Is it? Uh, you saying? That's, and then five hundred nine. Where are you we seeing hundred? Where are you seeing these numbers? On the right. Where are you seeing that's that? That's 719. That's what I said. I said it wrong but the first time. That's one way. Okay, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I swear to God, we got them for 214 round trip, like there and then 214 back. Okay. And now granted, it costs, Look, it's like 50 it's, bucks. It's a crazy uh, uh, good deal for the experience. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, but but Jet Suite, I'm not going to do fucking reads on the podcast for Jet Suite. Well, you we just did. We just did a fucking five minute ad for Jet Suite X. I know, but not every week. I don't want to do it every week. I just buy the fucking ticket. Okay. If you guys, fl- I'll just. Can you just read X? Can you just go Austin to fucking L. A. and then I'll just buy that ticket. Yeah. Can you get the fucking see? It's like it's like Southwest. You know, Southwest used to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. They just flew these little private routes, mm-hmm. and then you know, it's like you got a deal. It's like all of a sudden you're flying you're not on a fucking. You're not Where can to- you go from L. A. to on that on the on the Jet Suite X? You can go uh, to Vegas. I think Sacramento. Uh huh. Um, Oakland. You can't fly to Texas on them. No, I we were just there. We were just there the other day trying to get a flight, and they were like, "No, we just go um, Austin to, to Dallas," and it's packed, man. It's it's like it's a lot of people. It's it's a nice experience. You go to a private airport, and I I'm sure it's probably a lot more, but it's. It. Oh, it's just, type in just Vegas, huh? Just Vegas. Hmm. Now, just in the dollar for in all fairness. See what a ticket two weeks out costs, because I, I swear to God we got it for like two forty nine. And then I actually asked. Let's do that later. Yeah, let's do it later, or right now, or right now. Just click it, just click it, you motherfucker. Just click it, just click it. Two ninety nine, Tommy. Two nineteen. Two nineteen. I fucking told you. Okay, I'm gonna murder this coffee and beer. How much time are we doing today, Nadav? We haven't even talked about Aaron Rodgers, motherfucker. Hold on. Yeah, dude, we got time. Okay. Okay. So. You know, I've been interviewing you a lot on this show. Do you think people can tell I'm drunk? You can you tell I'm drunk? You can't, right? No. Okay. Um, no, you you tweeted, you tweeted out, hey, Aaron Rodgers, are like, are we going to dinner or are you coming to the show? Something like that. And you said he then DM'd you. Yeah. Was like, Are you he, fucking with me? He DM'd me and he was like, Yo, are you trolling me? And I panicked immediately. But the thing is, is like you know the place I was doing in in uh, in Green Bay is kind of big, and so I was like, I was like a week out. I'm like, still got 200 tickets to move. Let's fucking yeah, tr- get some draw up some heat. So I, they figured I, t- I was like, best case scenario, like Aaron Rodgers try t- writes back, what the fuck publicly? Yeah, instead he did it privately, like what the fuck? And but he was like, yo, are you trolling me? And I am was not trolling. It got a lot of traction. It like had a bunch of retweets, and so. It's all Green Bay fans, and and so I was like, oh, it did the work that I needed it to do. But then my, you never think they're real people, and I know people say that with us, but like you never think, you never think of Aaron Rodgers as a real person. Right, right. It's a guy on TV. It's a right. guy on TV. It's yeah. a guy that fucking does things that you could never do. Right. You, there's no way he's got a phone in his hand ever. Yeah. Right. He's got a like, he's got a model in one arm and a fucking, fucking football in the other, and yeah. fucking his, and so. 
he DM'd me and I was like, I got panicked. I called you. You're the first person I texted. Yeah. And I said, yo, uh, I think I'm going to fuck this up. And then I, I texted AJ Hawk and Pat McAfee. <clears throat> and I was like, hey, does Aaron Rodgers have a sense of humor? I think Pat wrote back, um, uh, he's got a very dry sense of humor. Or maybe maybe AJ, someone was like, whatever they said, I don't want to put words in everyone, anyone's mouth. you know, because And I don't want to tell stories out of school, but they were like, and then Pat wrote, I like what's happening right now. <laughs> That's the way his brain works. So I, and you said very, very directly, you're like, hey, all you say is I'm a huge fan. I'd like to offer you tickets to my show. You're like, don't try to write a joke. Just I'm a huge fan, tickets to my show. So then I just write that and I don't get a response for like a day. And I'm like, God damn it, man. Because I love Aaron Rodgers. I mean, who doesn't love football that doesn't love Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. You know, it's like, they're the, they're, they're just names that you've just enjoyed watching them so much. Sure. And he's been around like, for a fucking minute, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, it's like been a fucking, anyway. I text him, I write that, don't get a reply back. And then and then he writes back like, uh, oh, cool, I'm a fan too. And I was like, oh. And then he's like, uh, when do you get in? And I was like, Friday. And then nothing for like two days. And I was like, and then we got the tour at the Lambo. And I was like, dude, it's cool enough to be able to text with him and, and then go see Lambo and, and then just make a couple jokes. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then he writes back, you know, what time's your show? I was like, oh, no, what time do you go on? Which is more important. I go eight. I go on at eight. And then he writes back, is it cool if I stop by? And I'm just like, once again, it sounds crazy, but you don't think they're humans. Yeah. Like, you don't think of Aaron. I know that everyone listening to this goes, Aaron Rodgers is like a person. Yeah. And uh, and even still, up until the moment that he knocks on the bus window, when he knocks on the bus window, he's like, hey, you guys in there? It was like, he did it like a person. And you're like, and but everyone on my bus was like, it's fucking Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, it's, yeah. And then he walks in. He's like, hey, guys. And I'm like, hey, guys, this is Aaron. And everyone's just like. And he just hung out with us for like an hour and a half. And it was cool as fuck. He gave me a signed jersey. And I, we gave him a fucking sweatshirt. <laughs> gave him a birdie boy sweatshirt. And we just hung out and talked. And, and he was like so beyond cool that the next day we're watching him play football. And and he's like, you know, he goes up to the Bears. He's like, I fucking own you. I so own you. And all of us are like, that's so Aaron. <laughs> 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 that's the guy we know, at least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like the greatest experience. And it was, but it was like the fact that he was so generous with his time. And like, and then today I, I woke up, and the night manager at the hotel we stayed at had written me a letter. And and often I get letters, and I'm like, I read it, and I'm like, oh, oh, cool, thank you very much. And then just walk out, and then I was like. I was like, oh, this is going to sound really weird and sappy, but I was like, Aaron Rodgers was so generous with his time. Like, despite the fact that he might be might be a fan of what I do or what we do or whatever, but he was so generous with his time that I actually took a minute and I wrote the, that young lady a letter back. And I went, yeah, you can just take two steps. You can slow things down and just go like, hey, man, I really, as opposed to this, like, this rinse and repeat thing you sometimes get in the mode of doing where you're in public where you're like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, sure, let's get a picture. Ha, huh? and then... Then you get, and some people you affect their lives by doing the podcast or going through something. And they're, you know, a lot of people, I know you hear this too, but like, you know, their dad passed from coronavirus or, yeah. or something going on. And then they were really heartbroken. They listened to the podcast to help get them through it. And then I was like, I was like, I got that letter and I sat by the thing at the front desk today and I wrote her letter back and then said, Hey, can you give this to the night manager, Sydney? And, and I was like, cause Aaron was like so cool. And then, and, and then we did the show. It was great. And he had some of the, his linemen were there. And I invited him backstage, and we hung out. And then he's like, "Hey, man, thanks for being cool to my guys." And I'm like, "I was like, oh, it's like the fucking greatest experience." More people like that in my head, where I yeah. go, less cunts, less fucking like more people like Pat McAfee, AJ Hawk, and Aaron Rodgers yeah. in my book and make this place a better world. Yeah, yeah. Like AJ texted me, you know, uh, like you know AJ way, way better than I do, but he was like. Yeah, way better, way better than I do. I mean, I've, I've, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but I've done a couple of yeah. podcasts with him. He's a great guy. He's the best. Great and guy. He like texted and he was like, "Hey, man," and and Pat's like, "Yeah, I talked to AJ. AJ taught, said you're a cool guy." And I, I like texted AJ the next day and I was like, "Hey, man, thanks for you know." It's, I'm really glad I know you. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. It just it that whole Aaron Rodgers experience made me slow down and go, "Yeah, man, you like you you can be friends with you can." It doesn't have to be this fucking veneer up where you just yeah. go like, 
I don't trust anybody. R- right. It's a way shittier way to go through life to go uh, to be like I don't trust anybody. It's it's much better to just go like I'm going to trust this to be a, a cool experience and yeah. a cool person. And then you can sometimes be disappointed, but you'll probably have a lot more good experiences that way than if you go through life saying N- everybody is fucking untrustworthy. Yeah, yeah. I I've, I actually like I was t- I was saying this to you earlier, but like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He's, he talk, we, we we talked and he was like, we should hang out when you know in L.A. and I would love to hang out with him. But yeah. I'm I'm also weird about that. Yeah. I'm not good at follow through. I get weird about texts. Yeah, the thing the second that someone sends me a text, I go, I I don't know how to reply. Yeah, I wish I you're the one that taught me about emojis. Yeah, and like yeah, some people famous people send you texts and you just go like uh, eggplant, crying, laughing face, hands praying, <laughs> love. <laughs> And they're like, good call, Tom. <laughs> and here I am writing a fucking paragraph. <laughs> oh, my God. Christina, when, when AJ Hawk came over, uh, she was like, so you played football. You play football. And he was like, yeah. And he's really nice. And she's like, yeah. yeah, Tommy played football. I was like, I played fucking high school football. <laughs> like, Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Why are you fucking this up for us? Yeah. The, the oh, greatest God. experience was um, I get up early. I, I, I might have said this. I get up early, I see Lambo's across the street, and I know we're doing a tour, but I go, I, I want to see Lambo by myself, right? I just want to see the outside. I want to be like, yeah. have an experience. So I go for a jog, I get a coffee, or Diet Mountain Dew, and, uh, and I go for a, whatever, whatever. Let's not be attached to fucking details, motherfuckers. So, so I go, I go, th- I go in, I go to Lambo, I walk over to Lambo, and I'm walking, and I, I see my face on the thing across the street from Lambo, and it's just fucking surreal. For a kid that saw so many games at Lambeau, with the box playing, obviously, and then I start walking, and all of a sudden I see like a truck full of like Green Bay Packers, like it's they're going to practice, and I'm just like, oh my god, that's the team, like they're going to practice, and they're like, Bert, what's up? And I was like, shut the fuck up, and they knew who I was, and they're like, we're coming tonight, and I was like, and I called my dad. I, this is like fucking crazy, but I was like, Dad, professional football players know who I am, and he was like, yeah, of course, and I was like, no. Like that, when you're a kid watching NFL, the idea that those guys yeah, would, would know, know who the you. fuck you yeah. ever were yeah. is beyond crazy. It was yeah. the coolest experience that whole day. Green Bay was probably one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in my entire life. And on tour, where you just go, it doesn't get her better than this. Like, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is smelled good. He looked good. He had a great, like, it, like his hands are fucking huge. He has a size 14 foot. Yeah. Big guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Was he six two, more? He's uh, I think he's my height. We took a picture together, and I look like a fucking <laughs> panda. I mean, I look disgusting. <laughs> Pull up our picture together. I mean, my eyes are closed. Do you remember when Joey called me Chinese, and he was like, "Hey, everyone needs to stop fucking with Bert." Okay, he might look Chinese. He goes, "I saw him the other day at the comedy store. So fat, that was a Chinese guy." <laughs> Put up my Instagram, the but we look. I look like a fucking balloon next to him, and I was like, "All right, I got to lose weight." I texted really? my accountability buddy. There it is. Yeah, he's six two. He's a he's a big dude, man. He's in great shape. He sits on the he sits on the uh, table on the on a chair like on a seat, and his stomach doesn't hit his thighs. Yeah, he, he just sits there normal, like a regular human being. Yeah, he's not fat, not at all. It's some good. That's fucking Clinton dicks. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That was a child small. So you're going to do your, you, you texted your accountability buddy r- right after this? Yep. What'd you text him? I texted him, you know, I texted him what I ate. I didn't meet, I ate, okay. Yeah, you stopped texting me, Bert. What? You stopped texting me your meals. Yeah, because all yours were good and mine were bad. That's how that works. That's though. how that works. Okay. <laughs> Nadal's last meal was like, Fuck, this is a lie. He took a picture of this. What is that? No one eats this. Tomatoes, uh, cucumber, and two eggs. Okay. That's an Israeli breakfast. Yeah, who... Okay, I'm not believing this is a meal. Who eats this? I I eat it when I'm trying to get in shape, I guess. I mean, and then this is me. (laughs) 
This is our accountability is kind of a one way street. Um, all right, let's wrap this up. Is there anything we can talk about that we didn't talk about? Okay, we'll talk about Uncut Gems next episode. Okay, cool. All right, we got to go. All right, love you. All right, love you too. Bye. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.